Here we are, guys, gals, men and women. We are uh, going to turn now to the book of Galatians. In just a minute. Okay. It's right after 2 Corinthians. We're not going to do a full introduction to everything about the book. There's a main story that, I, that will help us with complete our studies on the cross, if you will. So, Father, we pray that you would uh, meet us here. Not allow us to lose this moment that we have together. Through tiredness and weariness. But, Lord, that you would give us our portion. And that we would give you our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... <laughs> So I think what most people are familiar with in Galatians is found in chapter 1. Now, if the, I'm not going to give a long history like I did with uh, uh, 1 Corinthians. But Paul writes this letter. It's an early letter of his. And it's an early church uh, area. It's a region that he visited, Galatia. And in Acts 13 and 14, we see the places he went in Galatia. Specifically, Antioch, Pisidia. Antioch, Pisidia. Obviously not the Antioch he came from. And the place called Iconium. And Dave uh, shared with us yesterday how he was stoned there. And, and then he got up and just went back in the city. What do you do with a man like this? <laughs> So in Galatians, uh, chap is another corrective letter. Oh, he loves them. He wants to be in communication with them. But Paul is very specific. In verse 6 of chapter 1, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ. To a different gospel which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So Paul says there is no other gospel. But I know that uh, you're turning towards another gospel, a perverted gospel. Because of the influence of people that have come among you. Which you can find out easily through the book is the Judaizers. Uh, Jewish messianic believers as uh, we were learned yesterday who are demanding that the Gentiles keep the law of Moses in order to be saved in Jesus Christ. Christ. And that tension that we talked about as the church is growing and becoming more uh, aware of God's plan God using Paul for the clear revelation of Jew and Gentile as one. This is all unfolding. And the, and the Galatians who started well are going backwards under the law, the law of Moses. And Paul says, I'm amazed. That, and you know, you may think the, the, the main verse I should say it this way. 
Sometimes in Bible schools, the main point that's brought out is the next verse about if an angel preaches another gospel, uh, let it be a And then it's pointed out about the Mormon church. Well, that's all true. Uh, it's not the main point of Galatians. Uh, the main point of Galatians uh, is do not turn back under the law. Uh, and turn away from grace. Uh, and just to show you that a little further, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? You that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or the what? hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you not made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. They suffered from their countrymen as Paul did by following Jesus. And he's saying it's for nothing if you turn back to the law. So this is clearly the theme of the book. And, you, and you'll see him discuss some difficult things later. We won't do those today. We go to chapter 2. Verse 11. Verse 11. And we need just to read from verse 11 to 16. Uh, chapter 2, Chagaratia, verse 11. This is so amazing. Uh, Galatia chapter 2, verse 11, Pakaya 16. Koma Pamene Kefa, Anadza, Kwantiokea, Ndinatu Tsananae, Pamaso Pake, Pakuti, Anatsu Tsika, Anatsu Tsika, Ola Kwa, Pakuti, Asanafike, E, Na Ocho Kira Kwa Yakobo, Anadi ya pamozi ndia mitundu. Kwa matata iwo, anazi weza, ndi kuzipa tula yeka. Pakuona iwo akumduridwe. Ndipo ayuda otsala, anawa gwiranso maso pamozi na aye. Kotelo kuti barna, uh, barna basinso, anatengedwa ndi kugwira, kugwira maso kwa o. Kwa matu pamene, ndi naona kuti sanari kuyenda kuongoka, monga mwacho na dicha utenga wabino. Ndinati kwa kefa, pamaso pa onse Ngati inumuli muyuda Mutsata makalidwe amitundu Ndipo si a uyuda Muka kamizanji banji amitundu Atsate makalidwe a uyuda Up to 14 16, right through Verse 15 Ifendife ayuda pachibadidwe Ndipo sidi ochi mwakwa amitundu Kwa mapozi wakuti Muntu sae sedwa ulunga mapanchido yala muno Kwa mamachi krupiri rocha Yesu Kristu Ifedu tinakurupirira kwa Yesu Kristo kuti tikaye sedwe olungama ndi chikurupiriro cha Kristo ndipo sindi nchito za lamulo pakuti palibe munthu aza yesedwa olungama ni nchito za lamulo Amen. Amen Paul and Barnabas their ministry centers in Antioch Paulo ndi Barnabasi ndi anu wake amene ali pakati kati pa utumiki A gentile church Mpingo wa mitundu Barnabas is, that's when Barnabas went and found Paul and brought him there to minister Barnabas anaka mpeza Paulo nkumbeleza kuti kula ndwa temenu kamti matia waka atumikile They've been there many years Akalako kumene kuzaka sochuru kila hapo Things are happening, there's lots of uh, people getting saved Antwa mbira kutembe nuka andipo sinduzi kuchiti kama ubino Peter comes from Jerusalem to visit Petro wabweda kuchokila ku Yerusalemu atzawa yendele Peter. Petro. Look at what happens to Peter. This is, this is Peter who heard from God in a vision. 
Oyo ndi Petro yemwe uja anamfa kwa murungu masompe nya kuti ipa idi achimene murungu wa cheresa usachi dates. The sheet that came down. Chinsalu chimene chinma chika uchoke na kumamba. In Acts chapter 10. Muka wirenga kumajiduatu mchapter 10. With all the animals. Ni nyama zonse zode tzedua. Not kosher animals. Ah, nyama zode tzedua. Rice Peter Killeny. Anamfa utenga kuti zuka pita upe uje. What God has cleansed. Zimene murungu wa yeleza. You shall not call common or unclean. Pasa pezeke mtu azinene kuti zosa yeletzedua. He goes with the men that come from Cornelius. The Holy Spirit falls. I love the way Dave put it. The Gentile Pentecost. I've never said that. That's great. The Holy Spirit falls on them. And so Peter, Peter baptizes them. Back in Jerusalem as they question Peter. Pamene adabwele da Jerusalem amamfusa Petro. He says, "Am I God?" Ndine mulungu. How can I forbid them to be baptized? Ineyo ndikale pere bwanji kwa baptize amitundu amena tembenu kamtima. They said, "Okay, Gentiles can be saved." Akuti chabwino amitundu na osa ngati kutembenu kamtima tiente wa baptize. Now Peter is in Antioch. Nde wanyamuka ulendo wake okupira kwa Antiochia. There's some messianic Jewish believers there. Nde panalika kulukenda kake ka Yuda koma okupira Mesia koma osunga bechira mulo. Who are probably still eating kosher under Jewish law. Iwo ngumba sadya nao kuda maitenga kuti ndiode tsedwa. You know, there's people who take time to grow into a freedom in Christ. And there's people who feel led to continue in a process they're in as, as they're loving Christ. I can't take time to develop that whole story. But there's Jewish believers there. And they're eating at a table their Jewish food and they're probably uh, keeping a little bit to themselves I don't know that. actually I think they're just keeping certain traditions that they're comfortable with Peter is with the Gentiles Probably having a pork sandwich. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> He's with the Gentiles. Perhaps eating Gentile food. He sees off in the distance. Some of the very strong Jewish Messianic Christians who are still believing that Gentiles probably should keep the law. We're in a time of transition. You may be thinking, shouldn't it just be clearly one way or another? You start a clock, this is the new way we're doing uh, it. Aren't you going through some changes this week? Is, is it going to take you some time to absorb some of the things I'm sharing with you and find your own way through all that? And you want to? And you're seeking to? And God bless you? But you're going through, and you would be anyway, you're going through a development. The church was being developed. This was a big thing to let go of Judaism controlling. It couldn't go just like that. And the Jewish believers had a very hard time understanding the freedom in Christ to not be under 
Jewish law. God had to send a man named Paul. He had to use a man named Paul to bring the clear revelation. Not Paul's private revelation, but the revelation of the mystery that previously was unknown. That Jew and Gentile are one. It's a big thing. So he sees these guys. If he was eating kosher, he picked up his plate. If he was eating unkosher, he left his plate. And he went over to the strictly Jewish table. Paul's there. And, and he sees this. Not, and not only does Peter do this. Barnabas. He says Barnabas was carried away by that pressure to satisfy these men. These important men. These important men. Paul had no choice. This is not just his personality. He had no choice. He stood up and rebuked Peter in front of everybody. Right then. He says, when I saw they were not straightforward, verse 14. Verse 14. He said to Peter, if you being a Jew live in the manner of Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why do you compel the Gentiles to live as Jews? Because Peter's actions were saying several things. Paul told Timothy, Elders who sin rebuke before all. It's talking about public sin. If a, you're in a church and one of your assistant pastors or the pastor is standing over in a corner cursing somebody out. Screaming at them. Or, or, or he's on the street, you know, uh, kissing and hugging a woman that's not his wife. You can't wait and go to him privately. He's sinning in front of the world in a very obvious way. Brother, that's sin. What are you doing? Stop that right now. This is wrong. You can't just let that go. When you know a leader has a problem that you know about but is not public but must be addressed we don't stand up in the church and say hey, <laughs> hey. Then you go to him privately and it's really the same for anyone. 
chinduka mbaza watu sokoni yewoka kwa manga kare ndi memba la wamba ngadi chindu sana tisana ziwe ena mumuzuzule kumbari you follow Matthew 18 mutsatire zimene Mateo chapter 18 akukamba kutu mumuzuzule payeka saa kumva muhita nepo wina kena kamugulese kumpingu but Paul rebukes Peter in front of everyone kuma Paulo anamuzuzula Petro pa maso pa wina liyese because here's what Peter said to everyone izizi zimene Petro ada ya mkula kwa wina liyese not a word came out of his mouth osa didi uli menina chokera mkama make but his actions spoke louder than any words. Peter said to these Judaizers that were coming you are better than other people. You are more righteous. You are separated and above other people. That's what his action said. But it's worse. It's worse. He said to all these Gentiles that Paul and Barnabas have been teaching the grace of God. You really are less. You really are not as good as the Jews. You really are not as righteous as the Jews. And you'll never really be just like us. It's worse. Because above all that, Peter is saying, the cross of Jesus Christ is not sufficient to save and cleanse a man or a woman from their sin and present them holy to God for full salvation. The cross is not sufficient and that was the greatest evil and what he did. Can you imagine just in this room I or Edwin stand up and look at you and call you out and rebuke you for something in front of everybody or a bigger gathering wouldn't every one of us, uh, if we were the person, be so tempted, uh, get up out of our chair, walk out the door, never come back? Wouldn't we? Wouldn't we be tempted? The humiliation. But first, let's talk about Paul. Paul stood alone. Barnabas was his close brother. Barnabas understood these things. Are you with me? It wasn't like Barnabas didn't understand. He knew what was going on. But he became weak. Out of the fear of man. Peter became weak. Out of the fear of man. Can any one of us say we have never given in to the fear of man? The fear of man casts a snare. That's what the Proverbs tell us. Clearly. The fear of man will like put a net in front of you. And if you let that control you, you'll fall right into that net. It will, it will, it will counterweight go up like this. You'll be hanging in a net like an animal. That's what a snare is. A net or some other a pit. You'll be captured and made incapacitated by the fear of man. We're not to be arrogant. 
I don't fear men doesn't mean I don't respect them. I don't fear men doesn't mean I won't be kind and gracious with them. Doesn't mean I won't submit properly when there's proper order. But sometimes what Paul had to do was stand alone. Paul stood alone and had to make a stand. And the saying is if you want people to stand with you, you must first be willing to stand alone. Amen. Think about it. If it's truly standing properly in God, I cannot wait for other people to join me. To agree with me. To support me. If I am going to stand for God, I must be willing to stand alone. Paul did that. We're not suggesting that you fight and make stands about non-essential things. Uh, you know, well, we do our offering at the beginning of the service. <laughs> we, do our, we do our offering at the end. No, you must do it the way I do and I'm going to stand on this. There's nothing in the scripture about that. And even if there was, it wouldn't be an essential of the faith. Christians will disagree on different methodologies. That is not absolute in scripture. And that's fine. But I don't care who it is. And I mean anybody. I mean anybody in my country. If anybody tries to tell me to teach people not to stand on the grace of God, but on human effort, legalism, one certain church structure, you have to be a part of our church, or, or, or you're not saved. I'll, I'll stand against that. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. What are you standing for? Listen, we should be loyal within a realm to the group that we're with. But this man will tell you clearly. CPC is a tool. Uh, CPC it's a blessing. But Jesus is who we serve. The church. <laughs> all the churches belong to him. Jesus said, I will build my church. And it's bigger than CPC. It's bigger than ACF. It's the body of Christ everywhere. It's your neighboring church. 
who do things a little different. Who sometimes people go from your church to their church. We're serving the king in his kingdom. And it is big. But when I stand for the gospel, Nobody's going to convince me. That must be my position. Not because of anything about me. Nothing to do with me. Because that is the gospel. I'm here to serve the gospel. Not another gospel. Not a perverted gospel. And it's a journey. And I want to encourage you. You will take things you've heard this week and you will chew on them. And you may feel differently even between you about how you allow that to uh, develop in your life. You're free to do that. I'm giving you the best time. But the Holy Spirit's job has been filled by the Holy Spirit. You don't answer to me. Yes, you answered it. But above all that, you answer to God. And if I'm encouraging you to seek God and to be sure that you answer to him, I'm free from the blood of all That's not on me. But you do with it. If I've given you everything I can. And it's not on you what somebody else does. But it is on you what you do. And you are allowed to grow and seek the Lord. And some people, I'm not saying in this room, and I just say it generally. Some people, the reason they will not take steps in some places is the fear of man. The fear of looking like you're too loose. You're too relaxed. You're not serious because you're not keeping all the rules the way the other guys are. Because you're not forcing things. It's hard to change. I don't know how much you need to change. I just believe we all need to change. And you get to be the one to get alone with God to have counsel but to also say where do I need to stay? And I'm speaking particularly when you have people in your church that want you to follow a path that is common, that is legalistic, that is traditional, historic, but not necessarily biblical. And I'm sure you have some people in your church. I'm certain of it. Because I've had people in my church and they'll continue to be that flow. And I'll do my best to teach patiently. Allow them room to, grow, to become understanding. I'll allow them to go. If they cannot find peace with where we are. But I'm not going to give up anything that I know is clearly that God told me this is the way to go. Because I serve the Lord Christ. Not men. The fear of man casts a snare. And Paul stood alone. Paul stood alone. Peter to his credit. Uh, 
He did not get up. Walk out into the field. Find a minibus. <laughs> and, and go back to Jerusalem. Never, never to be seen again. I don't know what process Peter went through. We thought he had already taken all the steps to that maturity. But he hadn't. He needed this part. It would be better to learn from his mistakes than to make the same mistake. But sometimes there's no avoiding it. We just can't seem to not make the same mistake ourselves. And then we learn. Peter did learn. So that in Acts 15, which is later, uh, this event in Galatia. Uh, in, sorry, in, in uh, Antioch. <laughs> in Acts 15, when they had the big council, and the men are still screaming, we must require Gentiles to keep the law of Moses and be circumcised. Paul and Barnabas come. They share the good work God's doing among the Gentiles. But they are not really in the leadership of this group. They are not the ones that are going to make the decision. They're testifying. Somebody needs to stand up. Paul's done that. Paul's doing it. Somebody else needs to stand up. And it says Akuti in verse uh, I'll get it. Uh, you can help me, Dave. Uh, okay. Verse 7. Verse 7. And when there had been much dispute Peter rose up. Petro anaimirira. He stood up. Anaimirira. Hallelujah. Nane na hallelujah. Are you happy for hallelujah. Peter? <laughs> Peter stood up. Petro anaimirira yemwe ujana zuzulidwa uja. In front of all the big Jews. Amaso awo se amahamogi. In front of James. Maandu bamaso ba James. In front of every single one of them. Wina liyeso opunzi la wake anaimirira po. And he said to them, Men and brethren, you know a good while ago God chose among us that my mouth, by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And we'll continue reading verses 8 through 11. Ndipa mulunga mene anadziwa mitima, anawajitra umboni, nawapata mzimu oera. Monga anadipata ife. Ndipo sana lekanise ife ndiwo. Na yeleza mitima ya mchikurupiriro. Nanga banji chopano mulikumu yesa. Mulikumu yesa mulungu. Kuti muike pako sila opu nzira goli. Limene sana te kunyamula kapena makolo ato kapena ifeyo. Koma chikurupirira tizapuru muka machiso mochambu ya watu yeso krisu. Monga iwo omwe. There is no more confusion in Peter. There is no more question in Peter. God saved the Gentiles. Just like he saved us. There's no difference. Our fathers couldn't keep the law. So why are you forcing them to keep the law? You're testing and tempting God. We believe through the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved in the same way as them. End of story. James gets up and says it's true. This is what we need to proceed with. Peter stood up. Peter stood up. Because Paul stood alone. What if Paul doesn't stand? Everybody wants to be like Paul. In the sense that we want to be the person that is so 
faithful in ministry. So blessed. Able to lead so many to Christ. Uh, I don't know that any of us wants his suffering. But I want to encourage you it's okay, you don't have to want his suffering. But you may need to stand. For the truth. We go back to Galatians quickly. And finish Paul's thought. It is, it is so beautiful. Verse 19 of chapter 2. Uh, We're not reading it all, and you should read it all later. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. And now let me just add, how important is the cross? It's this important. Verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Read this carefully. I do not set aside the grace of God. For as righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. The message of the cross. It's all or nothing. It is all or nothing. If the cross is not it, if salvation is not a free gift, God, apart from our ability to keep the law, then just throw the whole thing away. Because that's not the gospel. This is the gospel. God bless you. As you teach and preach. The Lord, may you help us all to stand where we need to stand, to humble ourselves where we need to humble ourselves, to be able to walk through these things in our minds and let you reveal to us how to apply them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.